Thank you for joining us for the City Managers Forum. We are thankful that the summer has come to a close and we are about to enter our new fiscal year. Though the one cent sales tax did not pass, we are dedicated to providing efficient and effective great service to our citizens in the most transparent ways. We want to thank the Rate and Fee Committee for all of their hard work and for our City Council for placing a sales tax increase on the ballot. We look forward to continuing to serve you in the upcoming fiscal year. Let's take a look at what's coming up in this next episode. With school starting back, we'll hear from Dr. Simpson in a little bit with Chalk Talk to talk to you about what's going on with the schools. Also stay tuned for Out and About with Cody Mosley, our Economic and Marketing Director. But first, if you haven't noticed all the great block parties going on in town, we'll share with you a little bit about the Make Guthrie Weird movement here in Guthrie. It just started as a conversation with me and my friend Becca Chapel about the slogan in Austin, Keep Austin Weird, which was a really successful, almost like, I guess it was a keep it local campaign almost. And we thought, well, why couldn't Guthrie be like Oklahoma's Austin? So um, we kind of, you know, threw around the slogan a little bit and people liked it. Like I talked to Trey at the coffee shop and he thought it was pretty cool and well, you know, several people did. By June, we had new neighbors at the Bluebell and new neighbors at Hancock's next door and uh, we thought, oh, we'll just have food and music. It'll be a little thing, like a little potluck. I saw a band that I really liked from Nashville, Escondido, was going to be playing and I kind of reached out to them and they said, sure, we'd love to come play in Guthrie and they showed up and played and I guess the rest is history. I think they're really awesome for Guthrie. It really builds a lot of community. I, I know I've been really involved in um, kind of areas of quality of life uh, as, a, as a vice mayor and as a councilman. It's creating that community feel internally with Guthrians uh, in town. And I think that's great because uh, it helps create an identity for Guthrie as a place that uh, uh, has a lot of um, things going on in town. And, and it's a time that we can uh, relax uh, it's a time that we can uh, bring in some culture and some, uh, it also brings people from out of town uh, as far as uh, Oklahoma City and this whole region, Crescent and Kingfisher and uh, Stillwater. Um, so it really brings people in to get kind of just a taste of what Guthrie can offer. Well, I think that the city has been working really, really hard on being able to make these events easy for business owners. Uh, it's easy to pull the permits to get the, the streets blocked off. We have been able to do beer gardens outside, which doesn't really happen in Oklahoma City very often, where you can sell 3-2 beer outside, which makes it great for our business because we're a saloon. So that has been really easy. Uh, there's been food trucks that have come up, begin to come up for these events, which is, I think is great for the city. People get to experience different cuisine. They get to just have a great time, walk up to a food truck, which doesn't happen here very often. So that's been really great. People from other cities bring in food trucks. Uh, I think it will bring in business owners and entrepreneurs and people with a little creative spirit that want to come up here and add to Guthrie's atmosphere, and we would love that. The, the block parties, they are so amazing. The streets filled with people. There's proof that the Guthrie community wants this kind of thing. They want family-friendly events. It, we just need support, <laughs> you know, to help keep making them happen. And oh, my take on it is that Guthrie is full of eccentric and wonderful people, and this just celebrates it. And so I really, I really believe in it, and and think it's a, a great, great campaign. Welcome to Chalk Talk. I'm Mike Simpson, Superintendent of Guthrie Public Schools. And normally at this time, I have one of our staff members uh, or a community member, then we talk about uh, issues with the school district. But we're going to do it a little differently today. Uh, I've asked the voice of the Blue Jays, Chris Evans, to join me today. 
and we're going to talk a little bit. I'm going to let him talk to uh, try to get information from me. Uh, we'll see how good of an interviewer he is, and we'll talk about the upcoming school bond election. And uh, Chris, thanks for joining us today. Uh, uh, I know you've got nothing else to do on a, on a beautiful uh, uh, morning like this, but uh, thanks for uh, spending some time with us. You bet. Boys are in school now, so yeah. i got a little bit more free time. So yeah. We've started school. It is here. It is here. Everything's going well so far, and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But the big news, of course, the Board of Education and you guys announced a $2.4 million bond proposal in the, in the November 4th general election. Yeah, we're excited about that. Uh, we, we've tried to, to look at the things that are most important with our district and our buildings. And uh, we've got to, uh, you know, there's been talk of closing this building or closing that building or building an elementary school. We're not ready to have those discussions yet, but with the growth that we have, even if we built a new elementary school, I'm not sure we could close any of our current buildings. And uh, nor would we want to at this point because we, we've tried to look at the money that we have if we start with a $2.4 million issue. The shortest duration you can have legally is 24 months, two years. And so with that, we're going to try to address the the biggest needs that we have with the money that we have available. And a big portion of that is $2.1 million toward three elementary schools. Uh, there's a track in there as well, but the main thing is those elementary schools when you're talking about roofs and windows and repairs to those schools. When you have a house and you, you live in a house and you want to you wanna maintain the investment that you have, uh, it has to start with the roof. Yeah. And so as maybe boring as that might seem, it's essential. Yeah. And so uh, the, the roof at Central, the roof at Guess, the roof at Fogarty, uh, those are essential items and we can generate annually about $650,000 out of our building fund. Well, uh, a roof on, on Guess, for example, is going to be almost a million dollars. And so there's no way that we can address those needs and, and not sacrifice from somewhere else that eventually would touch the classroom. And so that's why we have to look at a bond issue to try and accomplish what we're looking for. And another big portion of that, it's $300,000. It's a small portion, it's yeah. a good start toward technology, which is something uh, the school district I know has put an emphasis on installing into the district. A lot of school districts will dedicate between 500000 and a million dollars a year just to technology. And you know, technology is not any different from, for us as it is for your home. Uh, you know, when you go to Best Buy and you buy that computer, by the time you get it home, you get it out of the box and you plug it in, uh, it's pretty much outdated. But the computers that we have, we've been forced because of budgetary needs and the, f and the fact that we have not had bond funds to do this, we've been forced to purchase computers from Edmond Public Schools when they deem them to be obsolete. And that's what our students and our teachers have been using for many years now. And um, a lot of our machines are running Windows XP, uh, which, Windows, which Microsoft does not even support any longer. And, and so with all of that, we want to give our teachers a laptop that they can take home and use to work with their assignments and work uh, to email parents and, and students and, and just to, to enhance the, the, give our teachers a better way to accomplish things. And so that's, that's part of that $300,000. That's a start. Yeah. And that's really all it is. And you know the 2.4 million vote on November 4th got to have a super majority, which is 60%. Yeah. And I know this is not you got a long range plan. It wasn't just made up. You guys have a plan for the future. We we have what we tried to look at is we've we've tried to settle on a sweet spot of of property millage, and uh, and we've we've kind of settled as the, as the school board, the long range planning committee, uh, the you know all the staff on 20 mills. And that, uh, the impact that that would have to the property owner would be a, a little over $16 per month if you own a home that's, that's valued at $100,000. And again, that goes up or down based on the value of your home. And so when we look at what we could do over time, you know, you try to factor in uh, lots of different variables such as uh, 
is the property going to appreciate so will, can we can we generate more money down the road because the property has appreciated and we factor in all of that along with expected interest rates of bonds and things like that and we've got somebody a lot smarter than me doing it thankfully <laughs> I saw your numbers. I don't know part of it. <laughs> and and when you when you look at all of this you can forecast out uh, seven eight nine ten years based on that property millage and and that uh, that accounts for reasonable growth it doesn't account for uh, if we were to have a a huge industrial plant come in or something like that it doesn't account for an outlier like that but it accounts for reasonable growth and gives us a, a way to forecast what we could present to the voters and so as we look down the road obviously we've had discussions about because of our growth in elementary school right now if we were to look at the class size restrictions that we have a moratorium on, but if they came back in um, and we had to uh, follow those class size restrictions, we would be fined over a million dollars per year. Well, the, the solution obviously is just go hire some more teachers, but they don't have a classroom to teach in. We don't have the classrooms necessary to, to hire those teachers and put those kids in those classrooms. And so this is a way that we can long term forecast this and we're, we're actively searching for land to purchase so that we could build another elementary school and, and try to address our needs and plan for the future. Because it's been a long time since we've built a school building. Yeah. 1987 I believe is when it was, uh, when Guess was built. And there's been, uh, there's not been a lot of growth until about the last five years in the school district. But if you drive in our school district, you know that growth is coming. No doubt, I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a fun time because there's a lot of things you can take pride in because you talk mm -hmm. about Guthrie Elementary. That was built almost 25 years ago, came yeah. up on 25. And you see how that worked. You see Jell's Mustang when that was voted on 2005, how that's turned out. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get things rolling, going in the right way, there's some things you can take pride in with these projects. Well, and, and the thing that, that is keeping with the way things have been done in Guthrie in the past, uh, we've also taken good care of our older buildings. Yeah. But we've got to continue to maintain them. Uh, Central Elementary is a solid uh, building. Yeah. It's a good educational facility from the standpoint of the building itself. It's landlocked and the playground is inadequate. But the building itself is in good shape. So we want to, with this first bond issue, we want to protect our investment on the, on the facilities that we have as we look to the future and to address the needs and the growth that we know is coming. Got the elementary, got some new flooring in there. It looks looks fantastic. We we put a tile in in uh, guess last year. We need to put a roof over it, but we put carpet in at Central yeah. uh, this year, and we do those things out of building fund. And again, that's uh, about six hundred fifty thousand dollars a year we get out of out of the building fund, and then we. Uh, but uh, we spent about three hundred fifty thousand dollars out of that just in maintaining, uh, buying, uh, cleaning supplies and wax and all of the things that you need to take care of the building, and so then we've tried to have some pet projects along the way to uh, to enhance our educational facilities so that we we maintain them and we make them better. Fun time in Guthrie. I know you were in the hallways of school, uh, first start of school. Your yeah. little girl started uh, pre-K. Uh, here in town, so it was a, a fun time, exciting time, first week of school. Well, one of the things that I tried to do in, in the enrollment process and all of this is I tried to, as much as I could, be a normal parent. I, I went and stood in line. I went through and did the, I, I made sure that I did the proof of residency twice like everyone else does. I wanted to see for myself it's you know it wasn't exactly undercover boss but it was but we were trying to I, I was trying to get a feel for that and um, you know there's some things that that maybe we can refine that we're gonna work on a little a bit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't think of how many times I had to write out my address yep. on a form yep. uh, but but I went I wanted to do that intentionally so that I knew what our parents go through because if I don't truly know that, then I can't uh, I can't be sympathetic to their to their concerns. Plus, when somebody comes to me and they're mad about the fact that they have to present two proofs of residency, I can say, 
you know what, I had to as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exciting time. Your staff seems uh, yeah. energetic. Uh, administration seems energetic. The best start of school that we've had since I've been here. And, uh, and I say that with a, with a, a real tinge of optimism because uh, we've had some challenges at times and we've, we've had some growing pains. With, uh, with transitions in leadership, th those always happen. Uh, and then we've had some, some things that have been handed down from on high above me, above our school board that we've had to adapt to. And as those things come, uh, sometimes they're painful. Yeah. And sometimes we have to adapt, and, and our staff has, has done a tremendous job of getting there and, and every day giving our kids the best they have. It's a fun time to be in Guthrie. A lot, I know we'll hear a lot more about the upcoming bond election, but always fun when school's back in. And, uh, did I do okay? You, you did all right. I, we might just have you back. Well, I, was, I, <laughs> I don't have the right questions that you have for the Omaha hotspot, but uh, appreciate your time, Dr. Simpson, and uh, we'll have the rest of a good school year. Chris, thanks for coming and talking with us today and being with us. Thank you. It's been Chalk Talk with Dr. Mike Simpson. Now we'll send it to Cody Mosley for Out and About. Hi there, I'm Cody Mosley, Director of Economic Development and Marketing for the City of Guthrie, Oklahoma. We've had a lot of great things happen in the last month. Porter Briggs named Guthrie as number one town in the South to visit. Porter Briggs is a retail, real estate, and tourism magazine. We are very thankful for their recognition of our hometown. I'd like to give a warm welcome to our newest downtown Guthrie business, JGF Design Studios, who is an architecture firm who will be moving into Guthrie in the month of September, just off of 2nd Street. Welcome to town. If you haven't seen it yet, please be sure to check out the article on Guthrie, Oklahoma, the emerging businesses that are here, and the new Oklahoma Today magazine featuring the Make Guthrie Weird block parties, the house parties, new businesses, the momentum in Guthrie, talks about gentlemen of the road, and of course the great people that make up this town. I hope to see you at the next Make Guthrie Weird block party, which will headline Guthrie's own Parker Millsap. Other artists that will be there include Kirsten White, Del Barber, and also from Stillwater, the group Massey. Here's a look of what's coming up as we look forward to discovering Guthrie together. And now for the official Spelling Bee Rules. September 6th at the Lazy e Arena, it's the Red Dirt Qualifier Pryford World Series Heartland Finale. For more information, call the Lazy e Arena at 800-595-7433 or go to LazyE.com. Check out the Byron Burline Band at the Double Stop Music Hall this Saturday night at 7.30, $10 at the door. For more information, call 405-282-6646. Saturday, September 13th from 11 to 1, it's the Volunteer Recruitment Cookout sponsored by the American Red Cross. Looking for a way to give back to your community during disasters? Join the American Red Cross. Come enjoy some great food and learn how to provide hope and comfort to your neighbors in Kingfisher and Logan Counties in times of emergency. For more information, you can 
can call 202-1009. It's 202-1009. America's favorite circus is coming to Guthrie. It's the Culpeper Merriweather Circus. Advanced tickets, adults $10, child ages 2 to 12, $6. Show day, adults 13, child ages 2 to 12, $7. Circus will be held on the grounds behind Comet Cleaners on Division Street. For more information, contact Mary Coffin or Lucy Swanson at the Chamber of Commerce at 282-1947. Saturday, September 20th, it's the Fly-In Community Day at the Guthrie Edmond Regional Airport. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., come and enjoy a family fun day with us. Aircraft and cars on display, door prizes, free lunch at noon provided by Oklahoma State Bank, free coffee provided by Rick's Fine Chocolates and Coffees. Great event, great event. A lot of participation, lots of free plane rides for the kids, 8 to 9 or 8 to 17. They get a nice, nice 15, 20-minute ride. September 20th, Byron Burtline Band, 7.30 at the Double Stop Music Hall, $10 at the door. For more information, call 282-6646. The Make Guthrie Weird Block Party, Saturday, September 27th at 5.30, in person, Parker Millsap. Plus performances by Dale Barber, Kirsten White, John Calvin Abney, and Massey. Saturday, September 27th to 28th is the Oklahoma Wildlife Expo at the Lazy E Arena. If you've never attended our Wildlife Expo, now's the year to do so. With so much to see and do, we know you won't be disappointed. And if you've been to the Expo in the past, bring a friend this year and get them excited about the outdoors too. Either way, we'll see you at the Lazy E Arena east of Guthrie. First weekend in October, the 2nd through the 4th, it's the 18th annual Oklahoma International Bluegrass Festival right here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. For a list of who you can see, go to OIBF.com or call 1-877-203-1206. October 4th through the 5th in historic downtown Guthrie, it's the Guthrie Escape Art, Wine, and Music Festival. Saturday from 10 to 7 and Sunday from 10 to 5 with the assistance of the Oklahoma Arts Council. For more information, call 260 234 or 282-7778.